Welcome in everyone to our first dream job webinar of 2023. Hope you all had a happy new year and a good winter break. We have a fantastic conversation to start off our new year with the head designer of a well-known uh, wedding dressmaker and fashion house with operations in Europe and America and, and a long history of expert work for what they do. And we're gonna dive into the world of fashion design with Sharon Sever in just a few minutes. So thank you, Sharon, for joining us. He's speaking to us from his home base in Tel Aviv, Israel. And Zoom, right, makes it all possible. And we have Nate Daniels providing sign language services. Alexis is here from the Ruben team. Alexis, you can turn off your camera now and she'll be in the chat if anybody has questions. I'm Danny Rubin, I'm the founder of Ruben. And for those who don't know, raise your hand if you're new to our webinars. This is your first time. Anybody new to us today? Or is everybody I returning? <laughs> <laughs> the run is new. Oh, no hands. So everybody's been here before. Everyone knows what we do. But as a reminder, we provide online curriculum for business communication skills. One of the biggest skills we teach is email etiquette. Uh, teachers, do raise your hand if any of your students ever email you, but it looks like a text message. Any hands up for that? Emails that look like they're texting? So we help students be professional and appropriate when they are pursuing opportunities. And one of those opportunities is in the world of fashion. And we will talk to Sharon about his job and what he has accomplished in his career. We'll do that in just a moment. Before that, we as those of you who have been here, you know we like to share some resources. Alexis, you see that um, there's a question to share the uh, worksheet link one more time in the chat. Thank you. And we're going to do a little bit differently today. You're getting a little bit of a sneak preview of something big that we're going to share next week. Did anybody see in, in any emails we've sent that we have a big announcement coming next week? Any hands up for seeing our, our big announcement? I'm going to tell you what it is right now. Because you're here with us right now live, and we appreciate that, I'm going to tell you what it is and, and tell you, you, you can actually get started with it right now. So I'm going to share my screen. We usually give out some free resources, some email lessons, some worksheets. This time, it's different. We are staging a national contest, and it starts next week. Oh, well, we're announcing it next week. It starts February 1st. It's called America's Next Great Intern. Alexis, if you could please share the link in the chat. And while I'm talking, you can look around and, and you know go look through it more fully when we're done with this conversation. We are allowing students to compete on their professional skills, showing us their handshake, their phone skills, their email writing in a national competition. And we will choose the 10 best students across the country and put them out for a public vote in March and then let the country choose the best potential future intern in the country. There are prizes, there's Amazon gift card prizes, there are prizes for professional clothing, a paid virtual internship, real prizes. This is a real deal national contest across all CTE programs in the country. And the link that Alexis shared with you will take you to the contest page with full information. And you can register as uh, to register your students right from that page right now. And you'll get all the information in an email right after. If you have further questions about it, you can put them in the chat to us and we'll answer at the end, or you can send us a message, okay? And I'll have an email for that in a second, but just go to that page and start to tell your school, your school district about this contest. It is coming and it's officially launching next week. So I'll mention that again at the end, but I want to keep our conversation going today. But we're very, very excited about this brand new national contest that kicks off February 1. Um, OK, so a couple other quick things to mention, and then we'll get to our special guest. We will continue to do our dream job webinars around this contest. And our next one will be January 24th. We're talking to a surgical technician, someone who helps a surgeon perform operations. So look out for that uh, link, the announcement. It's coming soon. You're going to get different emails from us the next few weeks. The contest webinar is just 
you know, keep your head on a swivel with us and join us when you can. But that's our next one at the end of the month. If you have um, questions now or um, after, if you're watching on a recording and you want to be part of this contest, send us an email to the email in red with Ruben Intern Contest. And we will get back to you promptly and answer those questions. You'll also see on the landing page for the contest, we have some Zoom Q&A sessions scheduled for the week after next, where you can have all your questions answered too. So we're going to make ourselves available to you. This is a new thing for you and for us. And we want to make sure you're comfortable competing in this contest when it kicks off next month. Finally, everybody here with us live will receive a certificate for participating in our discussion today. So that'll come in your email tomorrow. All right. So this is a, a new, new year and a new webinar and new stuff. Can I see any hands? Is anybody interested in this contest? Excited about this idea of this contest? Let me know in the chat. You know, we really want to help your students get their hands around this work and learn professional office skills through a fun contest. So we would love to see what you and your students can produce. And we're giving you as much notice as we can so you can be part of it. So with that, I want to bring us back to our special discussion today with Sharon. And again, thank you for, for being here. Let's start by, please tell us about your career so far, you can, you know, the the uh, the highlights of jobs that you've held and what exactly your job is today. Let's start with that. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you for having me. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sharon Sever. I'm 52. I was uh, born in Israel and I was uh, born in a city called Ashdod, which is uh, not the biggest city today it is, but uh, in my childhood, it wasn't that big. Well, I was uh, raised in a pretty traditional home, but my father was a photographer, so he always had an eye for design and fashion. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, always very fond of drawing, sketching, and making artwork. And my teacher, my arts teacher, always encouraged me to develop uh, my talents. And uh, the thing is that later on in life, this uh, very specific teacher became my boss because Galia was my arts teacher and I was oh, wow. uh, living next doors to her twin sister and her niece was one of my best friends in high school so i've always been in very good uh, and close relations with uh, galia's daughter so the years went by and uh, after my military service i was looking for an education it was time to go to study uh, go to the university it's a little different in israel right and i i mean there was no other idea in my head I just wanted to be a fashion designer so my mom spoke to Galia because Galia used to come often and visit her sister and uh, the decision was made I took a plane I went to London and Paris to look for a uh, fashion academy and I decided I mean I fell in love with Paris and I lived in Paris for four years I think two weeks after I got back, Galia snatched me and I started working for her. And that was almost 30 years ago. So we wow. have a long history. Wow. And today, Galia's daughter is our CEO. So she's my boss. <laughs> wow, that is, that is so wonderful that it's really been like your only job, right? This is like where yeah. you have worked since you went to school. And um, I'm going to share the company website while we talk. And tell us what your job, what you do in your job as the head designer, as we look at the beautiful dresses and such a nice website, um, what, what, are, what is your role today? What are you doing, you know, on, a, on any sort of average day? Being the house designer means I am the house designer. I design everything from... Uh, choosing the fabrics, to uh, fittings, to traveling and meeting brides at trunk shows, 
We do a uh, fashion bridal market twice a year. We make uh, evening wear. We do a lot of custom for celebrities and red carpet. It started as a small business in Tel Aviv. And then we moved to a bigger store. Then we took a, a bigger space. And now we have a building. Uh, today, we are the first ever fashion israeli fashion house that was acknowledged as a couture house by the uh, french federation of the wow. chambre syndicale of the haute couture and that was a few years ago and wow. since then we've uh, developed uh, the market internationally worldwide our biggest market of course is in the u.s because uh my style has always been very feminine and very sexy and it was embraced by the american public with no fear i have to admit the europeans were a bit more reluctant but uh, i found that the american brides were very open-minded and it hit off after the first season that we presented in two years we were selling in over 50 selling points around the world and today i think we have almost 100. wow um i just want to you know we've had some wonderful guests on our webinars um you know this one you, you have international reach you are rec recognized by you know sort of french fashion can i just see some hands do we have some students watching who are like wow like this is this is real. This is big time. Can, can I see some teachers that can echo that through their students watching? Because, you know, th this is this is a, a sort of a major um, sort of cultural business that we may have seen in America and not not known. While we talk, I want to start to encourage uh, teachers to and students start to put your questions in the Q&A area in Zoom. Along the bottom, start typing your questions. When you type the question, put your name and your school so I can give you proper credit. And as you do that, I'll, I'll ask a few other questions. And um, Sharon, you sent me some photos that um, you know are good good to speak from, and you sent me many. I just want to start with this because is this is this uh, Jennifer Lopez in yes wedding dress. Tell us about this picture. What's going on here? So it's her latest movie called Shotgun Wedding. Uh, the uh, stylist approached us and Jennifer wanted uh, something timeless to be in a movie, but she wanted something non-traditional. And that's why they turned to us. And I suggested that uh, specific color because I thought it would really complement her. The only thing was that during it's an action movie, so the dress is being tortured and ripped throughout the entire movie, but that's the only outfit she's wearing. Then we had to produce 28 identical oh my ones. my gosh. And we didn't have a lot of time and everything was done during COVID. So it was all Zoom calls and Zoom fittings. And uh, the day we had to ship all the dresses, it's been decided that the shooting is in the Dominican Republic and it had to be shipped elsewhere, but uh, we made it happen eventually. Okay, that, well, first of all, we talk a lot in our webinars about the power of numbers. Students, how many different wedding dresses did they need to make for the movie Shotgun Wedding? How many? Put it in the chat. How many did they have to make of the same dress? Who heard that number? Can you tell me in the chat what number you heard? So as you, as we look for their answer, I'm I'm curious. And thank you for sharing, everybody. How how does a, how do you make a wedding dress? What is the process? Are you sourcing material from various places? Are you designing it in house? How do you ship it internationally? What is that process to make? A wedding dress and again i'm encouraging the students teachers please start to share your questions in the q a as we go but sharon not not in the comments please but in the q a mm -hmm. put your questions how do you make a wedding dress uh well fashion is a dream 
and making clothes is a dream for many people. It's sort of a complete transformation through fabric. So it always starts with an inspiration. Even before I sit down and I sketch anything, I need to be inspired by something. It starts with my dream that is being transmitted and presented to a customer uh, via a sketch first. Once the sketch is made, I have to look for a suitable fabric. Fabrics are sourced all over the world from, we have manufacturers in Japan, in China, in Spain, in the United States, in Brazil. Uh, we have embroideries made in France and in India, and uh, it's, uh, it's a very, very big industry today. Uh, my only regret is that there's no industry in Israel, so we have to source everything uh, overseas. Okay. That, so it's, it's a global business. And um, yeah, it is. does everything end up getting sent to you in Israel and it's assembled there and then shipped to the customer? Is that how it happens? Especially the custom made things. The custom. But, uh, for collections, I, I mean, I have to go with Galia at least twice a year to Paris to the big uh, fabric exhibition, the Premier Vision, where uh, the new collections are presented. That's very important for any designer to be updated with the latest trends and uh, see what's new in the industry. But apart from that, we have our um, best partners who always send us their innovations and we're known for being an innovative uh, company, especially in the bridal world, which used to be super traditional mm. and it's not like that anymore. And uh, I'm proud to say that we kind of brought this uh, revolution to this industry because the wedding dress used to be something super traditional. But ever since I was a student and we had our first uh, assignment in wedding gowns and my uh, fashion design teacher was pretty shocked with what I presented. And I told him that, he told me that these are not wedding gowns. And I told him, no, these are, the new age of wedding gowns because things have to change and things have changed. Wow. And, and, and your vision, the company's vision has played a huge part in breaking down the traditional wedding dress into something more contemporary. Like you, your company has been a leader in that change over the last 20 years, you'd say? Uh, we've been exporting for about a decade, but Galia started the business almost 40 years ago. And uh, when I came back from Paris to Israel and I was a little uh, depressed because I left Paris, I found <laughs> that, first of all, our weddings here are very long because our ceremony party and everything, is, it takes uh, all night and sometimes uh, over 24 hours. And that um, introduced me to a different kind of bride that was open for a change. And I wanted to bring all the knowledge that I've, uh, that I brought with me from Paris, all the knowledge of couture and high fashion to an industry that was kind of, um, mm. Stuck ready for news, ready for disruption, cubicle. they say in America, right? Ready for disruption. Okay, so I uh, brought the disruption, <laughs> especially right. to the United States. I remember the first time we came to a bridal market, some of the uh, our biggest clients today were pretty amazed with the things, and we... We brought a style that wasn't uh, even known right. in the wedding world. So uh, fortunately for us, especially the younger generation of uh, wedding buyers were very open for that. And today they're some of my best friends. Wow. And it took, it took some guts also to bring it out big time and just 
being unapologetic about who we are and what we want to do when that's um, a very important thing in fashion. You always have to know who you are and uh, just uh, bend the rules in wow. a way. How about any students? Let's see some hands. Who believes in what Sharon just said that you have to stick to what you believe in, even if it's new and people may not get it right away. You have to hold on to your truth and what you believe. Who believes that? I think that's amazing advice, not just for fashion, but but in life. Um, we have some questions from Nyack, New York, Riverview High School. Thank you. I'm going to combine these questions. Students want to know, what are some uh, jobs that can help you get started in the industry, like some entry level jobs and also what kind of education do you recommend that students obtain do they need to go to college can they just start working like an apprentice what would you how can students get started here as they're still in high school wow uh 10 questions <laughs> yeah the question is you know they're, they're uh, in school start... and they're like how do i get in the industry Okay, well, first of all, education is education. There is no future without knowing the past. And I'm a great believer in that. Mm. You need to know your basics. True, uh, the academy, university, college is a bubble. It's not real life. And a lot of people are just... Uh, gathering knowledge in order to do something else afterwards. But if you want to be in the uh, fashion industry or in the beauty industry, I think the basics of all that is arts. That's why I learned uh, fine arts and specialized in fashion. So I think you need to know art, painting, sculpture, in order to understand the human body. And, uh, you know, every muscle has a function. And when you want to dress a person, you have to know uh, the uh, qualities of the human body. And that is also very important. Hmm. So anatomy is another very important thing anatomy, to know I love that if you want to do fashion. Uh, color, the knowledge of color is also very important. And of course, the practical things, flat patterns, sewing, embroidery, and never say no to anything. I, I took any course I could. Again, I was a foreigner in Paris. I knew I only had four years for uh, getting a degree. So I wanted to do everything I took. Costume history, embroidery, painting, uh, even some furniture classes. Everything was something that helped me in gathering more and more knowledge. And then I started uh, going to internships. Uh, mm -hmm. I went to styling agencies. I had internships in big fashion houses. Uh, I started with uh, a smaller company that was called Angelo Tarlazzi my first year. Then I went to Balmain and Balenciaga. And my dream was Christian Lacroix, which was the master of haute couture in the 90s when I was a student. I kept on getting uh, very beautiful and polite uh, refusals. So one day I just took my portfolio and I went to the fashion house and I told the receptionist that I'm just going to stay there until somebody talks to me. <laughs> and she which, said, which fashion, okay. house? which fashion house was it? That Christian you did Lacroix. Time? Okay. The one where you wanted you. Okay, go ahead. So I sat there and it was lunchtime and everybody went down and I saw the people I knew and I knew the studio manager and I knew the assistants and I recognized everyone and they saw me sitting there and I kept on sitting and then they all came back and it was 6, 7 p.m. and they understood I'm not going to leave. So the studio manager went down to 
uh, just uh, waved me off, but I opened my portfolio and uh, I got my first internship with La Croix that day. Wow. And then I was asked to come back twice. So I had three internships over there. Then I went to uh, okay, hold on, hold on. Before, before you did the next one, I have to ask, first of all, that's an amazing story. How many hours were you sitting there? Mm, all day. <laughs> like, like eight hours? More. <laughs> just sitting in the lobby and just like until they had to just come and deal with you. You just sat yes. there. Yeah. <laughs> is every student hearing this? This is how opportunities happen. How badly do you want it? Right. And he, okay. So continue with your, your internships, keep going. Uh, then I did everything they asked me. I did deliveries. I did sewing. I measured fabrics, I did fittings, I was uh, sitting with customers until I got my uh, big break in uh, designing a few things. And later on, I had uh, my first um, practice with Gallia and it, uh, it took off and it was a very successful experience, but I had these butterflies in my head and I wanted to have my own business. So I left after a few years mm -hmm. and I did a lot of things on my own. I had a ready to wear line and I even worked in retail as a sales uh, person on the floor that taught me a lot. I was uh, helping stylists. Uh, I basically did everything i help uh, i used to assist photographers makeup artists mm. i learned from everything wow and when i came back and i did come back uh, that was uh, really coming back with a bang we started with a very big collection we went to new york we brought a new style and uh, it took off from there. In the beginning, it wasn't that big. Of course, every order was a very big uh, thing. Of course. But uh, it was uh, 2013, I think, that Instagram started uh, growing. And Galia's son, who was uh, our CEO, understood the power of social media. And being a bridal company, we were the first fashion company who gained over a million followers on Instagram. Wow. And it became very popular as a uh, community. And we've developed that community into, uh, well, you got to understand and you've heard my story. The whole business is run as a family. We're all a big family. We have uh, people who've been working there for 30 years. Uh, I've been there for over 20. It's, uh, it's a very passionate and emotional thing uh, working in fashion and you have to be fully committed to it wow. you know I want to go back to a couple of things you said first of all one thing I'm hearing from you and I hope the students are too is that when you were early on at your internships you tried everything and you said no to nothing and that is very important for students to hear you're not too good for any job and you can learn from upholstery on a chair that could inspire shoes or a dress. So everything, you know, comes back to you to you know uh, to a good idea. You never quite know. And, and also um, that you um, you know just work in so many different environments and put yourself in unique situations. And that's where where you grew. So I really am glad that you 
took students through through that and also the types of courses you recommend they take anatomy fine arts color sewing i just think you're you're a great example of being committed to this type of work early on and it has helped make you very successful i i would be remiss if i didn't share a few more of these photos that you <laughs> sent me i think we know who this person is who knows who this person is in the chat can you tell us in the chat who are we looking at right now and make sure you comment to everyone not just hosts and panelists who are we looking at here anybody know this face and tell us about the dress while while students are are commenting thank you sharonda make sure you do it to everyone not just hosts and panelists how did this dress come to be sharon uh this dress was uh, especially designed for serena williams mm. we've had a request for uh the um oscars party and she wanted something very unique but you know she's very fit so she wanted to show her uh abs so that's why i designed it with the midriff exposed uh, of course you know sensational figure she's uh, i think 6 or 61 then the dress was phenomenal i even um, named my cat after her <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm I'm a very very big fan. <laughs> wow. Well, what about this one? Who's this? This is Katy Perry. That's right. Katy, Katy Perry, Perry wore this dress that was presented in Paris in one of our couture collections, and it brings me back to being accepted by the uh, French Federation. So I just wanted to tell everyone that's. Uh, not living in the big city, it uh, doesn't matter where you come from. Mm. I came from a pretty small town and I never imagined my teacher would be my boss. I never knew what an amazing mentor she will be throughout my entire life. She taught me a lot of great things. And walking on the catwalk in Paris, presenting an Israeli fashion house, being an Israeli designer after almost uh, 25 years. Is that, that this I left, picture? Is that this? Was, uh, it's uh, the first one, yeah. That's probably one of the most exciting moments I've had in my life. Tell us what's going on here. Uh, since I was so emotional at the end of the first show, I burst into tears, but the show ended and we had to go out. So they just pushed me out while I was crying. <laughs> <laughs> what, what were you crying about? What was so emotional? Uh, just being there, just, mm. uh, being in that moment and, uh, understanding that we did it and we yeah, did it together you got to the top wow uh this this one who's this everybody who knows who this face is tell us about this dress see some hands going up tell us in the chat uh, who are we looking at paris hilton this so, dress what is this? was uh well paris hilton told us she's getting married and we've been in very close uh, relations with her stylist. So I proposed a few sketches and a few were chosen. I flew especially to LA to do her fitting. Wow. That's a long, how, 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 tell the students, that's about what, a 12, 13 hour flight? No, it's only uh, 14 to 15 hours. Oh, only, oh, <laughs> only 14 to 15 hour flight. So that's yes. just a quick just a quick trip to L.A. from from Israel. Yeah. So we brought all the dresses and she tried them on. And the minute she stepped out in this one, her tiny dog just rolled over it and just kept on jumping all around it and I think that's what made her pick this one <laughs> and I'll take advantage of this moment to tell you that unfortunately this is the little dog that 
uh, disappeared. Oh her yeah, her name's Diamond, and she, Paris is looking for her everywhere. So this is right now. This is happening right now. Yes. So oh my gosh. if anyone hears anything, if anyone knows anything about Diamond, please oh, wow. let Paris know. We will be sure to do that. <laughs> so uh, that was another very emotional thing uh, wow. in picking this dress. We all, we all had uh, teary eyes when uh, this moment happened. But dressing brides is uh, a very, without sign, sounding very presumptuous, it's a, it's a gift. Making a bride happy on her wedding day is something that needs to be appreciated because this is an emotional purchase. And when you are given a gift of designing something that transcends a person into the happiest moment in their life, it's from up there you know <laughs> it's it's it is as they say in america div divinely inspired right it is uh it's a special skill to to make the it's a gift happen. it's yeah. something yeah, I, that well uh, i want to ask you about that sharon because th there's something to be said for having a gift but also you know you may have had the gift inside of you as a teenager but if you didn't put in all the hours to learn, to intern, to try everything, to listen to your mentors, maybe you wouldn't have realized that gift, right? You could, it could have been, um, you, you could have never done what you have done if you didn't put in all the hard work to take your gift and magnify it. Do you know what I mean? Like it took your own efforts combined with your unique talents. But I know exactly what you mean. And fashion in general has to come from your gut because if you don't feel it, nobody else will. Mm. If it doesn't excite you, it won't excite anyone. Wow. And you have to realize that uh, being able to do that is uh, not to be taken for granted. And that's uh, another thing I learned from Gallia because when I came back from Paris, you know, I was in uh, big fashion houses and uh, we used to go to dinners and being uh, in a couture salon mean that, meant that you have to work with, uh, you know, VIPs. So we're in Israel and I used to come to work in a three-piece suit and uh, we used to dress bright. And then when the photographers came in, they used to tell me congratulations instead of the grooms. <laughs> so yeah, they told me, you can't dress like this anymore, you know, and you can't be a snob because nobody likes snobs. Mm. So you can have your own... Uh, how do you say you can be a very outstanding person, but you cannot be a snob because nobody likes snobs. Write that down, students. <laughs> You're hearing it from the highest levels of fashion. Nobody likes a snob. And um, and that served him well for for 20 years. Uh, I, I want to. We're at 110 Eastern. I want to wrap up with a few announcements and we'll come back to you, Sharon, in just a moment for your final thoughts. But students, teachers, has this been an unbelievable conversation? I mean, can I see some hands? Like, wow, this is this is awesome stuff. What a way to start our year. I want to share um, a, a final few announcements, including... Let me start with this. Um, I mentioned before, if you missed it, and Alexis, if you can please share the link one more time in the chat, we are launching a national contest next week. And the student submissions begin February 1. It's a helping students to showcase their employability skills. Please visit the website we just put in the chat. Register your students and your school. Get ready to compete nationally. 
uh, in America's Next Great Intern Contest across all career pathways. We'd love to have you part of it. It is free. Okay. Um, a couple other announcements. We have another webinar coming up later in January, talking to a surgical technician. Keep an eye out for that. Uh, there's a certificate coming to you tomorrow. If you were here today live, you'll see a certificate in your email for being here. I also, I, I, I didn't give this out at the start, but I think I will at the end because we're, we're, we always do it. And I like giving out ready-made resources. So here's one for the group. Uh, we usually say it at the start, I'll say it at the end. We have a library, a, a short Google Drive folder of free exercises for job interview skills. Learning how to research a company, request an informational interview, ask smart questions, write thank you notes. We even learned today, sometimes you have to just sit in their lobby until they cannot ignore you. <laughs> That's an amazing story that I'm gonna remember a long time. Uh, teachers, if you don't have these resources and if you'd like them, this is how we'll give them out. We always do it this way. Go right to the chat right now, type the word interested and your email address. Interested and your email address. And if you are new to our community and we've never used our resources before, what we like to do is have a five minute conversation. It'll be ideally Friday tomorrow to get to know your program, help you incorporate these lessons into your semester. And also we can answer any questions about our contest as well. So if you'd like these resources for job interview, go to the chat and type interested and your email address. And if you're new to our community, look for an invite on your calendar for Friday. If the time is not good, suggest a new one. It's a very short phone call and we can help you get up to speed on everything we've got going on this spring semester. We have a lot happening, a lot of new things, this contest being one of them. So please request it. We'd love to chat with you and help you make the most of everything we have going on, all of our free resources throughout the rest of the school year. Okay, so we appreciate those who put their information in the chat. And I wanna thank everybody for being here today. I thought this, again, such a wonderful discussion. Um, let me, uh, let, let's go back, Sharon. We'll sort of try to wrap up with some final thoughts for the students. Again, you have a lot of students here today who are in fashion classes and maybe they're just getting to know this industry for the very first time. As they go from towards graduation, to, to potentially college, give them your, your, your best advice as they're in these early years, just like you were in their you know, late teens, early twenties, what would you suggest they do? Well, first of all, keep your eyes and ears open, look out for any opportunity, even if you can assist, I don't know, uh, a wedding salon or a photographer or do a part-time job in, in the beauty industry, it will always teach you something. Uh, what I can tell you about work is that know that this is a teamwork. Nobody is uh, working on their own. I'm nothing without my boss. I'm mm. nothing without my seamstresses without the pattern makers, without the sales people in the uh, retail department. I'm nothing without the girls in the uh, showroom. I'm nothing without the stores. You never look down at anyone. Mm. Love it. Yeah, that's such, such good advice. Uh, a, a very important thing in life. The other thing I wanted to say is that um, you have to know who you are and what you want. You can't just say, oh, I want to be a fashion designer. You have to find your niche and specialize in that and bring something to the table because nobody is um, paying attention to anything you do if you don't have an agenda, if you don't believe in something. And if you believe in something and you're committed to it, everybody will feel it. And it's so easy today because when I was a student, we had to carry books and buy magazines and they, everything's online. You can find 
everything, right. everywhere. Right there. Everything is based on data, which you can gather everywhere. You have amazing websites. Uh, sign up to McKenzie or uh, Vogue or the New York Times. You learn a lot from it. Just mm. gather all the information make use of this data and it will get you anywhere you want. You can base your uh, work on everything that's uh, happening in the world. It is so easy to discover these things today. Amazing. Um, Sharon, thank you. In Hebrew, we say toda raba. Appreciate thank your you. time. <laughs> Um, amazing advice. You are so humble, but I think we have seen today the incredible work you do on on an international stage, but you are very humble and you live out that idea of don't be a snob and you certainly are not. Um, so we want to thank you for, for your time and for sharing with us. Thank you, students and teachers. We will be seeing you, hearing from you in the coming weeks with our contest, with our webinars. Stay in touch, stay close to your email. We look forward to engaging with all of you very soon. Thank you and have a great rest of your school week. And until next time, thanks for being here.